Chair recognizes Senator Patrick to speak for the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the recognition. You know, I've uh, listened to the debate, and uh, and I will follow your guidance, Mr. President, of staying to the bill. Uh, but I think Senator Watson uh, talked about some procedural things, and I would just say, Senator Watson, um, you and others had a chance to craft this bill. We were one vote short for three months in the regular session. All 19 Republicans and Senator Lucio were with this bill. If you wanted to craft the bill that you could support, that was the time. You know the rules. The rules in a special session is we haven't had a blocker bill. So I don't know how sincere. You're a good man. I trust your sincerity. But you had a chance, and you didn't take advantage of it. No one else did in your party. This isn't about politics. It's about life. But it does involve procedure. And we do have a two-thirds rule. And our founding fathers, when they set up the Constitution, they looked at how we should move forward in Congress. And they decided, is it two-thirds to pass a bill or just a simple majority? And they decided two-thirds meant the minority could rule. They called it the rule by the tyranny of the minority. And so we were stopped. It's not that we didn't want to work with members. We passed the sonogram bill last session with three Democrats and 18 Republicans. So we tried. It just didn't happen. So here we are. And in all this discussion about procedure and all this discussion about choice, it seems like somewhere along the way we forgot about it's about taking the life of an innocent baby. Boy, we have not talked about the children and the babies enough in this debate. We just haven't. You said, Senator Watson, women are going to wonder why we keep coming after them. Well, I would suggest babies are thinking the same thing. I think it's time we recognize there's no more secrets. It's a baby right here, sonogram of my next grandchild sent to me the day before this debate began. That's my child, Senator Whitmire, and I know you're proud to have one coming too. I'm against all abortion. This bill's not a, about abortion. It's the law of the land. I respect the law of the land. I wish there weren't any abortion. We talk about the choice. You ask us, well, don't we put ourselves in the place of the woman and her choice? What choice does the baby have? Who speaks for the baby? You think, do you think if the mother had a conversation with the baby and said, you know, this just isn't really convenient to give birth to you right now. Do you mind dying? I think, I think that baby would say, I think that Mr. baby Patrick, would say. Could you pause just for a moment? Um, I think the lady's going to be escorted out. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. You recognize. I don't get mad with those folks. I pray for them. But let's not lose track of what this is about. This is about women's health care. We've talked about that a lot. We want to improve the women's health care. And Senator Nelson said it so well. But it's about a baby's life at five months. That's what it's about. You know, you, you, and I like you so much, Senator Watson, but you said things that just kept coming back to me about who do we listen to. Well, to tell you the truth, if you listen to the people of Texas, the people of Texas are in support of this bill. I've heard that fact thrown up on this floor for the last two weeks. It's a little distorted. That it's a minority of people. No, the majority of people do not support late-term abortion. Even the Huffington Post, it's a pretty liberal organization, by two-to-one margin, their readers don't support late-term abortion. And everyone supports improving women's health care. If you vote against this bill... What you're voting for is to say, we want abortion clinics to have a lower standard of care than a regular ambulatory surgical center. That's what you're voting for. You want less care. You're in favor of less care. Heaven forbid they're going to have to invest money to bring the standard of care up to a normal ambulatory surgical center. Well, if they don't want to invest the money, they ought to get out of the abortion business. Because that's how they make their money. 
but don't bring their level of care. No one on this floor would expect their child or their friend or their neighbor or their employee or their co-worker to go into a less than acceptable inventory surgical center. No one. We wouldn't accept it. But apparently, if you vote against this bill, you're accepting, yes, we're okay with lesser standards. I believe that a woman getting abortion, I wish she wouldn't, but I believe she's entitled to the finest medical care that she can get. Because, as I said earlier, her life is valuable, too. You should, if you vote against this bill, you're voting against lower standards. And if you vote against this bill, you're voting for doctors not to follow the drug company and the FDA's recommendations to dispense the RU486. I really don't understand how you can vote against this bill for any reason. So at the end of the day, I respect the arguments. It's been a, it's been a good day of debate. But I can't sit here and, and listen to all this talk that leaves out the most important person in the process is the baby. So who do I listen to? I don't apologize for being pro-life and I don't apologize for being a Christian. And I listen to the Word of God on this issue. The Bible tells us we are born in the image of God. And I believe when a baby's life is destroyed, we are destroying the image of God. And there should be no one out there celebrating it. If they want to, fine. But I will never stand on this floor, and I will never cheer, and I will never support anyone who celebrates destroying the image of God. There's two ways you can go in life. A lot of people say, I believe in God. But there's a quantum leap when you go from believing in God to believing God. A lot of people believe in God. But do you believe God? And how would God vote tonight if He were here? And I know I'll get raked over by the liberal blogs and, the, and some people in the media for bringing this up on the floor. But let's just be honest. Are we a nation that stands with a Judeo-Christian ethic or are we not? Do we get down on our knees and pray when our children get sick or when we have a, a, a tragedy at West Texas or 9-11? Who do we turn to then? We turn to God and say, God, please bless us. But on this case, no, 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 God, wait, sorry, we're not with you on this one. Well, I say the people who are for this bill aren't any better than people who are against it, aren't any more godly. I'm just saying we're listening a little closer. So I'm proud to stand and vote for this bill. I believe we're improving women's health care. And I believe we care about these children. And as I said, when it comes to choice, when it comes to choice, the baby doesn't have any choice. The baby doesn't get a vote. But tonight, the baby's going to get, by my count, 19 votes. 19 votes. Every Republican and one courageous Democrat who will stand and vote for the babies and women's health care. And I respect everyone's comments, and I hope you respect mine, because you're passionate, and I've heard the passion from my dear friend, Senator Whitmire, from my good friend, I've heard your passion. But let me tell you, you don't get to outrank me on passion. And I'm just as passionate, and I care just as much. And I know that this is the right vote on this bill, on this night, on this time. Thank you very much.